you already have the Mavic Pro 2, and you think that you don't need to downgrade to a Mavic Air 2, but I'm gonna give you four reasons why you should. Check this out. What's up guys, Myung here from Prodigy Studios. So I've owned drones since 2013 when Phantom 1 first came out, and then I would sell it and buy the next Phantom, and then sell it, and, and every time a new drone came out, I would get it, but nowadays my wife would give me the new one, right? So when I finally got the Mavic Pro 2, I thought that was it. This is one of the best drones I ever had. Uh, I don't need to downgrade. The Mavic Air 2 just came out. Um, and then I thought to myself, why am I gonna spend $1,000 to get the Mavic Air 2 when I already have the Mavic Pro 2? There's no need to downgrade. And even when my wife wanted to get it to me as a gift, I told her, please don't get it. Don't waste your money. No, 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 we don't need it, right? But I got a chance to fly my friend's Mavic Air 2, and I was actually blown away. It is an upgrade. It's really different. Um, there's a lot of, I'm gonna show you guys four features that I really like that convinced me to get it. And of course, every time a new drone comes out or a new camera comes out, it's always better, right? But you think to yourself, if you're gonna get a thousand dollar one, especially a Mavic Air 2, that's kind of more geared towards the consumers, you don't wanna get rid of your Mavic Pro 2, the professional Hasselblad camera, all the cool features and whistles and bells, and then downgrade to a Mavic Air 2, which has, from a Mavic Air 1, I used to own that before. I didn't really like it. It felt like a toy, it felt like a consumer's. And I thought that maybe the Mavic Air 2 was just a slight upgrade for me, but I was wrong. This camera is dope. This drone is amazing. And if I could pick one drone to buy, if I had any money right now and I had to just pick one drone to buy right now, it would be the Mavic Air 2. And I'm going to give you guys a couple reasons why, four reasons why that got me convinced that I definitely want to downgrade to a Mavic Air 2 for a better drone experience. Reason number one, HDR video. It's not a true HDR. It's not like if you were to use a RED camera where there's, there's this huge 13 dynamic range that you could color grade and bring back highlights and mess around with the shadows. It's not like that because I mean obviously the camera on this drone is very small but what it is is it's almost like a go if you own a GoPro it's almost like a GoPro it, it's used with a software it brings back the uh, shadows and then it would bring back the highlight and try to get as much dynamic range as it can so at first, when I heard about it, I wasn't too impressed. I mean, like my GoPro videos, I'm not that impressed. It has HDR features, it didn't blow me away. It's not gonna replace my you know, mirrorless cameras or SLR cameras. But when I shot a sunset with a Mavic Air 2 with my friend's drone, I've never seen a sunset from a drone looking like that before. I mean, I've been shooting, like I said, from 2013. I've been shooting a lot of sunsets and different kind of, you know, skies and colors and stuff like that. And naturally, you know, the shadows are kind of crushed just so that it could compensate for the uh, sunset colors. So then if you try to bring up the shadows, it gets a little grainy. You know, you kind of mess around. You can't mess around with the color too much with a drone video because it's not the highest quality of video that you can mess around with. But even though, yes, yes, you can do a little bit of grading, but even so, I shoot a lot of real estate videos and it's nice when I don't have to color grade that much because sometimes I'm editing five, you know, multiple houses in, in a day or two. So I kind of need to get my workflow faster. So when I saw the HDR video, the sunset, it blew my mind. I could finally get a sunset shot and still be able to see what's on the ground level. And it's important to me to show that because when I shoot a lot of expensive houses, I mean, and it's a sunset shot. You obviously want to show the beautiful sunset and you want to show the neighbor at the same time. You don't want it to just be a blur. It's all black and dark down there. But, you know, that's what I was used to for the longest of time. And that's just how it was. I didn't complain too much about it. You know, you can't complain when you don't know, right? So when I saw the HDR video, it was so awesome. I love the way it looks. Of course, it's not perfect, but it looks beautiful. The only downfall about the HDR video is that um, once you are in HDR mode, your FPS is only 30, so you can't switch it to 60 or even higher. So you could you know, get that slow motion if you wanna mess around with it or that smooth motion if you wanna have it. So there is a slight limitation as well. And also when you are in HDR mode, it's 
fully automatic. It doesn't give you an option to change of any of the settings. You can't go full manual on that camera. So I'm gonna give you guys not the reasons why that I love this drone, but also the faults that it kind of comes with it. But still, the, uh, the pro reason was enough for me to want to get that drone and play around with it. Reason number two, battery life. So the battery for a Mavic Air 2 lasts about 34 minutes average, could be more or less, I guess on how hard it's flying or how tough it's flying against wind and things like that. And this was a big game changer for me because for some weird reason, every time I went to a house to shoot uh, drone videos and photos, it'll take me about 30 minutes to get uh, my shot done. So most of the time when I'm using the um, Mavic Pro 2 Air or any other drone, I would have in about 25 minutes or so, if not less, I would have to bring it down, change the battery, launch it again and take it up. And it, you know, I mean, it doesn't take too long, but it is a little time consuming. But with the Mavic Air 2 battery, it lasts a little above 30 minutes. And now I could finish a whole house shoot uh, with just one battery. And that's really cool. Um, before I would have to bring like um, battery chargers with me if I do have a lot of house shoots for the day and I'm charging the battery inside the house and so on. But now I could just bring the three batteries that I have for the Mavic Air 2 and I could get my job done with just those batteries. So that was nice. And of course, it's only getting better, right? I mean, what's going to happen in about 10 years from now? It's going to last for hours? I hope so. <laughs> That's the... You know that's how we're moving right it's always getting better and better so we'll see we'll see how long this thing will last in the future right all right reason number three is i love how small and compact this drone is i originally loved my mavic air one because of how small it was when i go to my shoots i'm bringing in cameras tripods lights I, I got gimbals i got so much gears with me and it doesn't help that you know before i was carrying the phantom one two and three and then this mavic air two and this Mavic, I'm sorry, the Mavic Pro 2, this Mavic Pro 2 is small enough. It's okay. I mean, it's still tiny. It's not that big, right? But a lot, a lot of times I catch myself holding my gears in one hand and then now I have to hold uh, the drone and then my con controller with the phone on it. And then, it, it, you know, it gets kind of tough. I mean, my hand is kind of small. So, and I get to a point where now I'm just balancing and I could easily drop this. And I have to admit, I have dropped it a couple of times, but luckily it survived that fall. But with the Mavic Air 2, I love how small it is. It is tiny. And I could easily just hold it with one hand comfortably. And even though the controller is a little bigger and that kind of makes it you know, a little bit more bigger than I wanted to compared to the Mavic Air 1, but it's still small enough that I could comfortably hold it with one hand when I'm moving around. And even though it is smaller, Mavic Air 1 was small and it didn't really fly that well. If there's some wind and there's always winds you know, in my town, right? It would be kind of shaky. So when I'm trying to get smooth cinematic shots, you could see the little shakiness and it's got a decent gimbal, but still you could see the movement but with the mavic air 2 it flies almost as stable as my mavic pro 2 so smaller but very stable so my shots are very cinematic compared to the little air one that was kind of shaky uh, most of the time when it was windy so i love that feature all right guys just a quick reminder if you haven't hit the subscribe button please hit the subscribe button and i appreciate the support all right back to the show so just a quick, uh, this is not my top four, but I wanted to just mention some of the things that the Mavic Air 2 has that is better than my Mavic Pro 2. And that's one of, one of them is the 48 megapixel photo. If you need a huge uh, drone photo for big commercial work, then it's got that 48 megapixel ability. I also love how big the controller is. It's super comfortable. It feels like an Xbox controller, which out of all the controllers, that's what I love the best. It's big, it fits right in your hands, and when you shoot it and move around, it's very stable. It feels good in your hand. Uh, when you set up, you know, put the phone inside here and get the cables ready, and then you got the controller down here, it's very comfortable to put your phone inside, and it holds it. Even my phone has a huge case on it, so it's not even a problem to uh, put that into my controller right here. So this controller also comes with a new connection technology that allows you to stay connected with your drone for 
a lot of distance. Of course, by law, you can't fly, fly that far anyways. But if, even if there's some objects blocking it, uh, it won't disconnect. Even if there's a lot of frequencies, Wi-Fi's or things like that happening around, uh, it won't disconnect. And also it's so quick to transfer your video from your drone to your controller. You know, it's really nice to just, by the time you land and you look at your phone, all of your clips are in there. Before, with a, uh, at least a Mavic Pro 2, half the clips won't be on your phone by the time you land and you turn off your drone. So you have to kind of leave it on for a little bit so it's got time to transfer all the files. And it can also transfer 4K videos to your phone as well. Another feature that the uh, Mavic Air 2 has is that now in 4K, it could shoot in 60 frames per second. And in 1080, it could shoot in 240 frames per second. That is crazy. So if you were close and you're getting, let's say, someone riding a bike, doing a jump shot close to your drone, now you could slow that down like super slow. So that's kind of cool to have. And of course, it's only getting better every time a new drone comes out. Now, reason number four, the main reason why I moved to the Mavic Air 2 is because it has focus track mode. Now, what that is, it's, th that's a game changer, right? So every drone that comes out, it makes it easier for you to get your cinematic shots. The, my uh, Mavic Pro 2 made it where all of my house shots, I have to get a point of interest, right? You, the house is right here, and then the drone goes around, and it has your house maintained in the center of the screen and just goes around perfectly. You can't really get that manually. I've done it many times manually, and, and maybe you can on tripod mode, but it's not perfect. You're gonna kind of mess up a little bit here and there trying to get that shot. But when you are on that point of interest shot, it's a perfect circle, it's beautiful. So it's something I need to get all the time. Mavic Air 1 made it kind of tough to get it, or it was time consuming. You have to fly on top of the house, then fly away, then set the marker, then you fly around and Mavic Pro 2 made it easier because you just simply go into the mode and then you highlight your house and then instantly it'll go, it'll make the circle a point of interest shot. But you still have to go into a mode and into a mode and then you know, highlight and then it goes into it, right? And then when you need to change the speed, you push a button and so it's time consuming. You know, I did it. Um, I'm always in a rush when I'm shooting, you know, so it kind of, slow me down a little bit. That was probably the fastest you know, thing to do when it comes to that smart uh, shooting with your drone. But when it comes to getting other kind of shots, it didn't really have that option, right? So a lot of the shots that I get, for example, the house is right over here and then the drone is here. And as I'm going up, I would tilt the camera down and then I will tilt the camera up as I'm coming down. So it has a cool parallax uh, look to it, very cinematic. Uh, and, and I've learned to do it manually, but it's not perfect sometimes, you know, controller sensitive. So it, you kind of mess up here and there and then you go back and you do it and, and that's cool. So I learned to get a lot of my cinematic shots manually with my drone. But now with a Mavic Air 2, you just simply turn on your controller and instantly without going to any mode, you just highlight the house and right away it turns that uh, track mode on. And then now it gives you three options right away to either do the point of interest shot, and then there's a dial that you could just kind of move left and right for the speed or to make it go backwards. And the best part is that it has a, a tracking mode, um, they call it a spotlight, that allows you to move around, but the house will always be in the center of the shot. So you could not only move around the house but as you're moving you could come downward you could get that shot i just explained earlier how you go up and you come down and instead of using the controller to try to you know bring the camera down as you're going up it'll track it and the drone goes up and it automatically smoothly just keep the house in the center as you're going up and down so once i saw that once i experienced that shot it blew my mind then all of a sudden i was like what if i just move around like crazy. You could not only go up here, you could move in a circle while going up. <laughs> you know what I mean? You could move fly away backwards while going down. I mean, there's, there's so many different possibilities to get that cinematic shot and make it look very mechanical, very Hollywood, you know, because 
you don't want to get a drone shot. Let's say you get that house shot, right? You don't want to go up and then all of a sudden your camera's a little, you know, kind of moves around a little bit. It's very amateur style. You know, you don't want that. You want your looks to look, you want your looks to look very mechanical. And then that is the reason why people look at it and be impressed by it. It's like, wow, that's a great shot. With that focus track mode, you can now get crazy cinematic shots without having to learn too much. I have a couple of friends who just, for some reason, you know, they just have a hard time getting that cinematic shot manually because, you know, they're kind of new at it. I've been doing it for many years, so I finally got to, you know, hone down my skill. But, you know, with, with some of my friends, it, it takes them a long time to get that shot. Then they have to go back and do it again because they messed up. But now you could get those shots right away. You don't have to go into a menu, to another menu and get there. You just instantly is in the first page menu, highlight and go. So that helps out with a lot of beginners if you want to get a cinematic shot without having to learn so much on the you know, finger, hand-eye coordination movement. Um, and it, you can then now get just cool looking shots. Just, yeah, so I really love it. It, it blew my mind. I, I, it might not be as impressive for some of you guys, but I was definitely blown away. And I hope that they have that feature in every drone. And like how DJI has been doing, it's gets better and better. I don't know how they could improve on that because to me that is like the best um, you know, feature, a cinematic movement, smart movement that they have. But you know, who knows, they're always getting better. So I'm excited to see what's in the future for something like that. So I talked about all the pros, all the reasons why you should get the Mavic Air 2. Um, but there are a couple of things I don't like about it. And of course they, they must do this for marketing reasons, right? There's never a camera or a drone that they just put everything into one or else you just buy that camera and then their other gears don't sell, right? I mean, it's gotta be a marketing reason, but it's got some flaws, right? So some of them, one of them is it doesn't have full manual control. My Mavic Pro 2, control your aperture, ISO, shutter, exposure, and then you could get yourself some long exposure shots. It's basically a DSLR in a drone. Right? So that's kind of, it's very cool to have that feature. But with this one, it's mostly automatic. You can control your ISO. Um, you can control your shutter speed. But the aperture is stuck at, I think, aperture 2.8, which then is also a problem when you want to get super clear uh, photos or videos. Um, like, for example, when I use my Pro 2, I set my aperture to 10. Then now everything is in focus, right? But now with the 2.8, it's a lot easier to have things out of focus. Another feature that I didn't like about my Pro uh, Air 2 is that it doesn't allow you to tap to focus. My Pro 2, you could tap on a house and you could see the camera focusing just dead on. And then when you take the photo, boom, the house is 100% in focus. But with the Mavic Air 2, it's fully automatic focus. So then you kind of hope that it is in focus and, and most of the time it is. But there are small percentage where some of my photos or video looked a little out of focus. So it would have been so much easier if I was able to just tap it and keep it focused. But, you know, that's how they keep the consumer pro and professional apart, I guess. Besides that, I promise you guys, getting the Mavic Air 2, it's been out already for a while now. But if you still haven't gotten yourself a drone yet, this is definitely one of the most amazing drone to get. You won't regret it. It's probably the best drone to get in my opinion. Like I said earlier, this is the drone that I would get if I had to pick one and if money wasn't the issue. And even then it's only a thousand bucks, if not less. I think thousand bucks was with the bundle and all that good stuff. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you finish it all the way to the end, I appreciate you. Uh, once again, please hit subscribe, leave a comment if you have any kind of questions about drone or you know anything at all. I would love to connect with you guys and I hope to see you guys next time.